Okay, here we are. We've got connected to the ethernet. We have power here. We have an SD card inside and we have an HDMI cable plugged in that's going to our main camera. So I'm going to first add my first camera and now you can see me. Now, the camera input here is a 4K input, which means I can, since this is a 1080 device, I can kind of manipulate that and make it bigger zoomed in if I want, if I don't like the framing, which I didn't. So I'm going to reframe that here, click save. And now I have this image here, which is framed up kind of how I like um, my office being framed. So now you can see me here in this uh, OBSBOT machine. I'm gonna add another camera, only this time, I'm going to add an NDI camera, which is the OBSBOT Tail Air, which is a PTZ camera. And you can see it over here. I have it mounted there. Again, I can resize it if I want, but because the Tail Air is a 1080 camera, I don't. So I'm just going to click save and there's two cameras that I can switch back and forth to um, on this device. Now um, I'm actually got my SD card in and I'm going to start recording so that now you can see the quality of this recording that's going into this device. Now, one of the things I first did when I got this was I went into the settings and this device has two encoders, which is really great for, um, for live streaming and recording which I was able to put it in um, to the bit rate that I wanted. I customized um, to the second encoder to be an H.265 codec and um, 1080 30 frames per second at 20 megabit um, bit rate. One cool thing about the Tail Air, for example, if I was to come over here, is that it has built in um, PTZ control. If I go in here, you can see that I can control the PTZ here. So if I zoom in, I can zoom out. Um, if I zoom in, I can also tell it to turn um, up, down, left, right, down, up. Um, and that's pretty good. You can also do presets. So if I wanted to uh, zoom in on this, I could store preset one. And then if I wanted to zoom in, let's say on uh, me over here um, on the desktop, I could store preset two. And if for any reason I wanted to zoom in on the stream deck over here, um, I can set that as preset number three. Now, as I go through this, all I have to do is hit preset one. It's going to zoom out to the cup. Preset two is going to go back there. Preset three. And I've got my PTZ control right here inside of um, the OBSBOT uh, talent. So you can have hardwired cameras in it. There's um, two full HDMI inputs. So you can have two hardwired cameras in it. Um, if you have cameras that connect over USB, you can put those in there like a webcam or something. And then of course you can bring cameras over NDI as well. Like I have the tail air, which is really great. Um, all of your, all of your scenes at the bottom, but let's go through some other features and then we'll talk about the use case of this. So um, right here, you can see on HDMI number one, um, there's nothing happening, but on the tail air, you can see that there's a little audio level. So if I was to click here on this mixer, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, always on. There we go. So if I was to turn that on, now you're going to be hearing me in this recording, but that's from a, a microphone all the way over there. But you have a uh, audio mixer here. Uh, for the mic input, for the HDMI 1, HDMI 2, and NDI, those are my sources right now. And you can also monitor it through the headphone and you can turn that on or off. You can also do graphics here. So if I was to add a graphic, um, I can add in a title and you can use you know, some of their examples here. And we're just gonna leave that title text just as an example. But if I wanna put that on, it's gonna put that there. If I wanna take it off, I can push it again. Now, if I go back into the graphics editor um, and I click, uh, I don't want that on, but I do want to edit it. Um, so you hold down to edit. I can move it wherever I want it on the frame. Um, I can tilt it. I can shrink it in and out, and then I can save it. So now when I do this, you're going to see that um, it goes much further down on the on the slide. So I'm going to turn that off. Um, what other graphics can you add? You can add a title. You can add a lower third. We'll do that. Um, we'll just put this one in. We'll put it down here, of course, in the lower thirds. Let's make it a little smaller. Um, put it down there, click save. And then when I want to show that one, I can just show that one and it's going to show up on the, on the thing as well. And I can take it away. Um, you can do animated text, uh, like a ticker or something, um, down at the bottom. You can do a digital clock if you want some kind of clock running 
You can do an analog clock. You can do a bullet list um, for like, you know, if you're going to put things like talking points or whatever during the deal, um, you can put those on there. You can put social media, um, your username and everything. You can put your logo. And uh, since uh, it's your logo, I'm going to go into my SD card here and uh, I've got my church setup logo here. So I'm going to resize that. I'm going to put it in the, I'll put it in the top. Well, I'll put it bottom right, bottom right. Now this is the dark one, so I don't know how well it's going to show up, but we're going to put it in there anyway. And now I have my logo on the screen in the recording and on my live stream. And I can edit that if I want. I can move it around, um, put it in the top right, because sometimes YouTube has logo in the bottom right, you know, and you can do that. Um, and it's really easy to turn it on and off. Um, you can do your logo. You can do a scoreboard, a timer, a stopwatch. You can do a custom graphic and you can do a web page. So what's really cool about a web page is if you've ever seen uh, alerts, like if you're a live stream that does video gaming, you're pretty, you're pretty familiar with alerts. You just put it in there and it becomes like a graphic. You can load here, custom, because I've, I've built some um, from Canva. So I use Canva to build this one. So it says new obs bot talent. It's in the lower third. I'm going to click OK. So now um, that's going to come over that scene. Um, so if I was to come back out here, switch to my camera, and then um, go to graphics, I can put in my new lower third. And here we are talking about the new obs bot. Um, and then I can take that away. So cool. You can do so much with this. So next to the graphics, we can turn that back off. We can hit this. And this is this is actually kind of interesting. Um, let's, uh, let's choose white here. I think it'll show up better. If I was to talk about my Harold Bell Wright books, you can see them there. Um, and, uh, and if I, if I wanted to, um, you know, make sure everybody was focused on me, um, let's go back in here. We can add a camera. We can add a webcam. We can add video clips. We can add a picture, um, and we can add all kinds of stuff. So like I said, these are scenes. Let's add a video clip. I know I put videos on here, so I've got a countdown timer. We'll add that in. And then that's been added. You have this thing here. You can you can deal with the, the audio level of it, the video clips right there uh, before you leave um, the settings thing. You can do a play range. You can crop it. You can frame it. You can put a label on it. Um, again, you can add layers if you wanted to add uh, you know, a picture in picture here. Like I said, these are these are scenes, not just camera inputs. So I'm going to put, um, you know, this my camera here is a picture in picture. You can add music if you want. Um, you can add uh, other layers. You can move things around. Um, you can transform layers. You can chroma key things out. Uh, you can format things. Um, just a bunch of different things that you can do for this. I'm just going to save this as a scene. And now I have this as a scene. If I switch to it, um, it's going to start playing. If I hit play, now the video is playing. And you can see the video has audio as well. The video has music. So we can switch over to that now and listen to it. And while that's playing, I'm going to load up here. And you can see the video clip has um, significant audio coming from it. So if I turn that down and scroll over here and turn up my, my microphone on the NDI, this is audio coming through the Ozbot. I mean, this is this is absolutely insane that it can do this. Now let's ask the question: Use case, church, theater, um, school, even sports. Like, how can we set this up and do a good live stream show with this device? And is it is it easier? By the way, you can connect this over USB to an external monitor and get a larger preview. You can get a multi-view. You can configure that. I just don't have a USB monitor available right now to show you that. But let's build a church service live stream using this device. So we have our hardwired camera brought in already, and that's the one we're looking at. And in this church service, we have two camera angles. We have the straight on one, and then we have an NDI camera off to the side, and, uh, and that one's over there. So um, those are our two camera angles. However, before service starts, we want to add a countdown. So we're going to bring in the countdown timer. Uh, one of the things I want to do to this is to 
make sure that when I switch to that layer, that it starts right away. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the countdown layer. I'm gonna to come to actions and I want it to start auto start. Um, and at the end of this countdown, um, I'm gonna want it to go to the next scene, which is a welcome video. So I'm gonna I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna come out. I need to add my welcome video, which is the Sonic Beans video. Okay, I'm gonna save it. So when this one, I'm gonna come back in here to edit and make sure that I'm on the, the countdown video to action. It auto starts at the end. I want it to switch to the welcome video. So it's gonna, it's gonna automatically switch scenes to that one and I'm gonna click save. So now at the end of this countdown video, it's gonna automatically shift to the welcome video. Now I want this all to be automatic, so the welcome video, I'm actually gonna put an action on that, and it's going to start automatically as soon as that scene becomes active. And when that thing is done, when that welcome video is done, I'm gonna to switch to the main video, okay? Um, so I'm gonna save that. Now I'm gonna come back here and we're gonna just try this out. We're gonna to go to the countdown and then we're gonna to skip to the end of the countdown, let the countdown end and then see this automation uh, take over. So here we go, we're gonna come in here. Okay, so we've got 27 seconds left until it switches. We're gonna see if this automation works. Should switch to the next scene. Now the welcome video is playing. When the welcome video is done here in just a few minutes or a few seconds, it should switch to show me. And you can see it's warned me now that it's coming live soon in four, three, two, one. And I am live. And so there's there's all kinds of different things you can do with this when it comes to doing a live event like a church service in person. Now, the main thing that I'm interested in is looking at this uh, video clip and seeing what the recording quality is like. I'm going to move my hands. Um, it's it's recording, you know, at uh, at 30 frames per second. So I'm going to move around. One of the things that happens with encoders that are not quite powerful enough is that as you're moving, um, they they kind of jitter, and you can see like after images when you when you you know move from one thing to another. Um, on the monitor, I am not seeing any of that. It is absolutely smooth. It is absolutely you know buttery smooth over NDI. Uh, moving around, just seeing if there's some after. Now there's going to be motion blur, but what we don't want is is kind of jittering. This device, though small, I mean, it literally just fits in the palm of your hand. Though small, has a lot of power. And as long as you don't overload it with too many sources, too many layers, it is kind of like a, an Android tablet. As long as you don't overlay it with too many, you know, sources and things like that, it is a very powerful switcher, encoder, and graphics engine all in one. One of the things that um, it'll do is it will it will do landscape like this, which is how most people are gonna use it, but it can also do, just by twisting it over, you can actually configure it so that it will do vertical video as well if you wanna live stream to like Instagram or Facebook or something like that. But the main thing that comes down for me when I'm reviewing switchers like this is the video quality of the recording, the video quality of the live stream. Does it look good or does it obviously, you know, get inferior results compared to a regular software switcher using like a MacBook Pro or a hardware switcher like the A10 Mini Pro or A10 Mini Extreme. Now I do see a little bit in the movement test where I'm moving side to side, um, I do see a little bit of ghosting. It's not as crystal clear and smooth. It's not like a smooth motion blur, um, which you know speaks to the limitation of the encoder, especially at that bit rate. Um, it had a little bit more than I would have liked, but um, it wasn't horrible. Now it's not released yet. In full disclosure, um, Obspot sent me this um, for free. I didn't ask for it. They sent it to me to review, um, but uh, they didn't pay me anything. These are my honest thoughts. And when I compare this to like the um, Yolo Box, the Yolo Box Ultra that it would go up against, 
It's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more compact. And uh, in my opinion, a little bit better in quality than the, the YOLO box. And it's around the same price. There is one limitation when it comes to churches. And this is something I'm going to have to check on. Um, when I tried to bring in ProPresenter over NDI, uh, I got an error message. It would not work. I don't know if it's the ProPresenter version of NDI that it's using. Um, I don't know if... Uh, if there's something up with that, but no matter what I tried, I couldn't get the NDI output of ProPresenter to work with this, which I can with Ecamm and, and every everything else. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind. So overall, I'm super impressed with this device. When it comes out, if you are interested in something like this, instead of a regular, you know, live switching um, device, like an AT Mini Pro or like a, a MacBook Pro or something like that, then definitely give this a shout out. This is the OBSBOT uh, Talent. It is a multi-cam switcher, encoder. It's got two encoders and it is a graphics engine all in one and I highly recommend it.